Hey, what's up, guys? Tony Gonzalez here. Welcome to the next episode of Wide Open, the podcast. Really appreciate you guys stopping by to hang out. I have a excellent guest uh, for all you NBA 2K fans out there. This is going to be a big treat for you guys uh, because we have the face, the face of the franchise, Ronnie 2K, Ronnie Singh, but Ronnie 2K. Uh, appreciate you coming on, bud. Of course, Tony. My uh, pleasure to be here. No way. I don't know if you know too much about what we talk about when we're oh no, one hundred percent. I'm a big fan of the show. I. Uh, I was listening to Snoop one last week, and uh, it was funny when he started with the whole wide open thing. He, <laughs> he enjoyed that. Snoop's always Snoop's a character, that's for sure. Yeah, you. I, well, he's a big basketball fan too. One hundred percent. We actually put him. Uh, we scanned him into the game back in two K eleven. He was one of the first celebrities to actually like kind of buy into the two K world and uh, get scanned. And uh, I mean, back then he was he was it. You know, uh -huh. like he was the guy. So uh, yeah, just a big fan of Snoop over the years. Yeah, yeah. Well, I can't wait to get in to dive into to 2K. 2K. First of all, how long has it been around now? 2K. Well, the first title was in 1999, November 1st, was uh -huh. the first one on Dreamcast. Um, so that's sort of where the name came from. The first one was in the year 2000. Yeah, yeah. Well, sweet. So it's this been is great. this is our uh, 21st one that just came out. Our 22nd one's coming out. You know, this uh, this fall. Wow. That's amazing. Yeah, time flies. I can't wait to get into. We're going to get into the numbers of this stuff because this whole gaming. Um, uh, phenomenon. 100%. I'll call it is is it's especially over the last two years. It is it is really exploded. Uh, and it I'm coming from I'm from the old school where it's just like wow, people are actually making millions of dollars. Yeah, and if people are making millions of dollars to play it, it's kind of like in like real sports where if they're making this much, imagine what the ownership and like how much that franchise has been worth in the 21 years. It's got, it's billions. Isn't no, it? 100%. All, <laughs> you know, a lot of these teams are getting bought in from even NFL owners, Robert, Robert Kraft, Stephen Ross. A lot of these guys own esports organizations and the buy-in is, you know, upwards of 20 million, 30 uh -huh. million dollars in the early stages, you know? Yeah. And so uh, you said it best, the gaming in the last past couple of years has really exploded, but I mean, it's been a, it's been a steady rise. Like, um, you know, our generation, um, we think about gaming as something that was kind of like a pastime, and now uh, it's turning into a profession. It's not just getting paid a lot uh, to be very good at it. Now you're getting scholarships. Colleges are yeah. paying to <laughs> have you go and study that. Could you imagine, like, telling your kid, like, when I was a kid, and I'm, I'm sure we're going to talk about this, but when I was a kid, my parents weren't like, hey, go upstairs and prep your video game play. Like, yeah. make sure you're really good. <laughs> uh, but now that's obviously a thing. I mean, if you're good, you can, you can make a profession out of playing video games. Yeah. Well, well let's, well, let's start right there. Yeah. You brought up your, your, your childhood. Um, you're from the Bay area. We talked about that. Yes, sir. Um, what was it, what was it like for you growing up as a kid? What was the, the household like? Yeah. You know, I'm first generation, uh, Indian. Uh, my parents, um, moved to the States around the time that I was born. And, uh, you know, they had uh, a bunch of businesses. Actually, they started, you know, like, um, just with, with one and they had to work day and night. I mean, it was crazy. Seven days a week, 7 AM to 11 PM. We lived upstairs. There was the first business that they owned in, uh, in America was a, or in California actually was a, uh, a liquor store, mm -hmm. and but we lived upstairs of it in like a two bedroom apartment. I shared a bedroom with two brat young brothers until I was in eighth grade. Um, and uh, but one of the things that you know kind of brought me and my brothers together was playing video games. I owned the original Nintendo, I begged my parents to get me an SNES, uh, you know, way back in the day, and I still own my Nintendo 64, it's one of my favorite consoles of all time. Um, but back then, you know, it was, it was really about sitting on your couch and having it as a pastime and playing uh, video games. But but my parents had a really hard time with that because, you know, obviously first generation, there was a lot of pressure to do well in school and get ready for, you know, preparing to be a doctor or an engineer yeah. or a traditional kind of, you know, um, Eastern uh, career. Uh, so I was actually heading towards law school. Um, and even, even that in college, I changed my major like 7,000 times. Um, and that's not even an exaggeration. Like literally, I, I was trying to figure out what I wanted to do, um, but I, ultimately I settled on law because I wanted to be an athlete, but I, I wasn't quite good enough. Uh, didn't have your you know uh, athletic prowess, but uh, 
you know, I wanted to be a sports agent. I watched Jerry Maguire uh-huh. and Tom Cruise and I wanted to yell, you know, uh, show me the money. And uh, I wanted to be a sports agent. So I actually studied to, to go to law school, took my LSAT, uh, got into Columbia Law, uh, hated it with a passion, law school. I went there for nine weeks and then made this monumental decision to, to drop out. Uh-huh. Um, and my parents, like I said, had worked very hard. I was the fir- oldest of the first generation, and I was supposed to set the tone and um, you know, have this, this career that was had you know, postgraduate school, whether that was a doctor or engineer, like I said, but a lawyer was like, at least I'm going to postgraduate school. At least I'm doing you know, law. Um, mm-hmm. But uh, I made this decision. I was working for a, a women's basketball team at the time, and I was also working for this law firm. And I just really didn't like working for the law firm, but I loved sports. And so I made this decision. I was, you know, let me take a break from law school. Let me go chase this sports dream of mine. And uh, luckily, I've I've never looked back. I never finished my law school. Yeah, yeah. I had the opportunity for a couple of years, but I just I, I left it in my in my past. Well, obviously, it's it's worked out for you. And I think there's something to be said about um, sticking to what you're passionate about. Uh, and and that that's I want to dive into that a little bit because being first generation, yep. I was reading an article mm-hmm. about people that are first generation and how how hard they work yeah. and how the expectations from their parents. It's a lot of pressure. You talk yep. to anybody who's first generation, you're like, man, it's enormous pressure to go out there and be successful because you're coming to this new country. Your parents are like, this is what we got to do. This is how it's going to be. And basically they kind of choose the path for their children. Yep. Um, where did it come from in you to say, I'm not going to do it that way. Um, I mean, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to step out and do it my own way. I really wanted to set an example for my brothers and I, I always wanted to do that, but I've also been extremely stubborn, stubborn and driven and like the sports thing, it just never went away. I mean, I, I, I remember the first time I picked up a basketball, it was a lot later than most kids. Like I, I really got into basketball when I was in the sixth grade. Most people obviously get in it when they're younger, but once I picked it up, I mean, I was playing uh, me and my, my middle school friends th- three, four hours a yeah. day. Yeah. During lunchtime, a couple hours after school. I mean, it was balancing. The, the lucky thing for me is I always did really well at school without studying too hard. I was one of those annoying kids. Uh-huh. Um, but uh, but uh, I, uh, I really could not let go of basketball. I just, I couldn't. So I played in high school. I played in college. Um, I got injured in college um, I'm playing. But uh, I, I was never going to be good enough to make it to this 450 of the most amazing athletes playing in the NBA um, on an annual basis. I wasn't one of those people. I was never going to be one of those people. But I, you know, I just wanted to work in sports. And look, you probably know this, Tony. Like um, working in sports, everybody wants to work in sports, right? Like, and there's very few ways to make uh, money doing that. But I always was driven to the point where, like, if you're passionate about something, you'll figure out how to make money. Uh, eventually right yeah. and obviously getting to work in tech and then you know with the growth of of gaming the timing was perfect which i'm sure we're going to talk about in a minute but um that's sort of what uh, allowed for this opportunity and for my parents to really understand that this was this is what i wanted to do but that i could also be successful doing it yeah but you were able to do two jobs at one time right yep. didn't you have that your first job was working at a law firm yep i had to i had to kind of make sure you know mm-hmm. like if you're going to it was a tremendous opportunity. My parents had worked so hard uh, to give me the opportunity to to be in the position to do that. You know, I I didn't. I had a few summer jobs, but I didn't work during you know the school year, so I could focus on studying. And you know, I'm so grateful to my parents for allowing me to do that. So I wanted to make sure I was paying it forward and making sure that I was absolutely sure that this is not what I wanted to do uh-huh. in, in in the whole law thing. So I went to work for Morrison Forrester one of the best corporate law firms that there is in, in, in the world, MoFo. Um, but then I was also working for this women's basketball team. Um, and that was a job that started from the bottom. I mean, I was doing, you know, I was like sending press releases to press as a, a you know, a PR assistant. That was my first gig there. Uh-huh. And trying to sell tickets, trying to sell sponsorship. You probably know in minor league sports, you're only as good as how many people are sit in that sit in the crowd, and also how many sponsorships you can sell. Yeah. That's all of minor league sports, right? It's not funded as well as professional sports. Um, so I really got to learn about 
grassroots marketing and you know like marketing when you didn't have much of a budget really early on uh-huh. which trained me down the road for eventually what social media was yeah yeah so uh, what was going back to your childhood i don't want to leave it too quickly because sure um i'm a big believer that you know i got four kids yep and there's nature versus nurture and you said that you were always stubborn and that you know, basically that tells me, like, obviously you, you had this incredible passion also to spending three, four or five hours out there on the basketball court. I was the same yeah, way. Yeah. And everybody that I talk to on this show, they have this obsession for, for, for doing what they do. Yep. Um, where, where does that, what is your opinion about finding that passion and not settling when someone from your family or from an outside outside source is saying you got to go this way, but inside your heart you know you should go the other way, and a lot of people get stopped right there. They don't want to, they can't answer that call. I think a lot of people s- settle for what they should be doing as opposed to figuring out a way to do what they want to do and make it work. Mm-hmm. How know, did, where know? did that come from with you? Like, do you think you were just born with that, or did you have some mentors? Were there any mentors or somebody guiding you through this whole process? Um. I don't know. I mean, like, I, th- I just think that I continue to have this conversation with, with my friends and family, and I always brought up sports, and I, I just couldn't leave it alone. Mm-hmm. And, um, you know, m- my parents, uh, again, worked so hard, but what I really took from their hard work more than anything was you got to make just make it work. Like, mm-hmm. however you, whatever you want to do, you got to make it work. Like, th- their first business working for this, it, we're owning this store um, years ago, you know, working 16 hours a day. They just, they realized that they had three kids and they were new to this country and they hadn't come to the country with a lot of money that the, they just had to make it work. So I totally understand what you're saying with nature versus nurture. It is probably somewhere in the middle. Mm-hmm. Um, but I think you just have to be stubborn. You have to, like a lot of people just sort of just give up their dream because they have to, Maybe they have to make it work for some other reason, uh-huh. but I, you, you know what I mean? Like, yeah. um, and, uh, a lot of people want to be firefighters. A lot of people want to be policemen. A lot of people want to dance in ballet. I just want to work in sports mm-hmm. and I wasn't going to, I wasn't going to say, ha, let anyone tell me no. Uh, uh-huh. I love that. I love that. And I love how you said when you got to that firm, like you were doing remedial stuff, yeah. right? <laughs> and and start, some about starting from the bottom. Like you yeah. have to, you have to get your ass kicked. Yeah. That's what I always say. Like you're going to go through some shitty times. Um, tell me about that. When you, when you finally got to NBA 2K, how did, how did that come about? Uh, so I was working for this um, minor league baseball team. Uh, uh, we had R- Ricky Henderson, Jose Canseco, who I'm sure you remember, uh, huh? two hall of fame baseball players. Um, and uh, I had some fun doing marketing things. Uh, I won't bore you with the details, but it's really the first time where like I had kind of a grassroots marketing thing. I, we uh, we signed Jose Canseco, and uh, we had to trade him because his daughter was on a, another team, and so he was coming back to face us. And uh, this was in the heart of the Juiced book, like the the steroids book. Yeah. That he, he wrote mm-hmm. like literally was in the in those like six months. And uh, so he was coming back. I'm like, I really got to get this guy. We, we signed him. We had to trade him because he, he's being a baby. Like, how do I get this guy? So the night before, we went to Vaughn's. We bought a bunch of grape soda, grape juice boxes mm. and stickers of his face. And we just took stickers of his face and put them on, on uh, juice boxes mm. just to make fun of the whole, <laughs> the whole steroids thing. Uh-huh. And it got picked up on SportsCenter the next day. We did it as a game day giveaway. So like literally we just handed people a a juice box that they handed in, but it got picked up by SportsCenter. And that was the first taste I got of grassroots marketing, Uh which ultimately led to social media. So when I first joined 2K, you know, I was just like any other uh, kid at that time. I was in my early 20s and I was playing 2K after my getting off the baseball team. If we had a, a game day, I'd be getting off work at like midnight and I'd be going and play 2K till three in the morning uh-huh. and then waking up and doing it again the next day. Um, so 2K, I'd, I used to go right on the forums. I was top 10 on the leaderboards in 2005, which is the year before I started or two years before I started at 2K. Um, and so they sort of took note of what I was saying in the community. And um, so I, I joined them originally, again, you know, starting from the bottom, I, I, uh, I joined them as a person that would run their forums. 
uh-huh. even know what forums are. No, no, <laughs> that's the forum. That's where the Lakers played growing up. Uh, right? Forums, forums <laughs> are message boards. Okay. So like before there was Twitter and Facebook and Instagram, there were forums. Uh-huh. So you'd go in and, and there's still Reddit. Reddit is a forum, right? So you go in and talk about, you know, your thoughts in the game, little hints and tricks, all that stuff. So my job was to run the forums. Uh, what was great about that was I really got an understanding of our, of our consumer. Like, I think it's a position, like a lot of people that start at 2K start with testing or start with QA. And I love that too, because you're really learning our product, but you're also learning what our consumer thinks of our product in a very specific way. Um, so getting to join uh, in that capacity allowed me to understand our consumer in a really big way, which I think set me up later on in my career to be like, this, this is the trend. This is where this world is going. Here's what we can think about putting into our product. Here's what we think and think about doing in marketing that's going to set us apart from our competition. Uh-huh. So when I first started, you know, we weren't the only basketball title in the market. You know, Electronic Arts, uh, the the big heavyweight, um, you know, also had a basketball game, NBA Live. NBA Live. That's what um, I played in college back in the day. Yeah, yeah. I did too. In the 90s. To be honest, yeah. I, I played it in the, in the 90s and early 2000s as well. Um, and... Uh, they own the market share. We were under 50% item, uh, title sold. We were selling right around a million units. And then, you know, a bunch of amazing things happened. And the NBA got a lot more popular. I mean, you can't speak enough to how much the NBA has grown in the past 15 years. Um, since the magic days, obviously Kobe was a huge part of that. And then, you know, now you got LeBron, Steph, um, and all of these stories that have been built around these guys. So basketball take a huge rise. Social media was the other thing. Obviously, um, you know, when I started at that time, Facebook, you still needed a college ID. Twitter was a year old, you know. Instagram didn't exist. Snapchat didn't exist. TikTok definitely didn't exist. Um, but you had to take these things and you had to mold them and you had to make them work for our, um, for our title. And then the third thing was basketball in a, in a way that, other sports, as I'm sure you can attest to, have not really figured out still is how to kind of bridge that cultural divide. You mm-hmm. know, like basketball, when you think of basketball, you still think you think of music, you think of the sneaker culture, you think of uh, hip hop, you think of uh, a lot of the great fashion that, you know, Russ and uh, Harden and Westbrook and everybody that, you know, wears great clothing, um, all of that stuff kind of perfectly happened at the exact time that our game really stepped up in in its quality and all of that stuff sort of happened as a perfect storm and you know we we just took it to another level and i'm so grateful you know that i was i just came on it i I call it lucky Uh, you know i came on at the perfect time so you do you so you believe in luck i ask that question a lot yeah, I, I, I definitely to me, think- it doesn't sound like too much luck. It's, you know, that old preparation meets opportunity. That's yeah. what luck is. And it sounds like you had been preparing for it. One thing you said, too, is that you, you got to understand the consumer. Yes. Like you really understand. And, and, and so I think a lot of people starting businesses out there, not that I've started a business before. Yep. Uh, but I do believe from sitting down with movers and shakers like yourself, like that's, that's hugely important. That's how you become lucky. So yeah. what, what are I mean, some even, of your even messages? Even Snoop Dogg, who you had on last week, one of the things that I heard in that podcast was he really, he really understood what his fan was yearning for. Mm-hmm. And that's, all, that's what we're all trying to do. Yeah. We're all trying to, as a business, as a brand, yeah. we're trying to understand our fan and listen. Uh-huh. And you know, whatever opportunity that uh, I was able to do that, both as a fan of the game previously to me joining, and to you know, be part of that social media landscape and the forums, and like really listen to our consumer. I think, you know, was part of listening to our consumer and helping make our product and our marketing reach more people. Uh-huh. Do you think that that's the biggest reason why some brands make it and some some don't? Oh no, I definitely think that that's everything. That's like, everything. There's so a lot you, of brands that, that there's a lot of brands that just don't listen to their consumer. And how, the second that you, you stop what? listen, um, I mean, look, w- our innovation. Um, is really built off of what our fans are asking for. Uh-huh. And over the course of years, it's, it's built with a, a long plan. Look, so we're an annualized title, so we can't do everything every single, every single year. We have to set expectations, we have to set a plan, and we have to go execute, um, knowing that every year we're going to have to create a stamp and then 
do some of the ideas next year or the year year after. But we've really built this thing. You know, I talked about the growth of our, our game. Our game when I first started was quick game. And what that is is five on five. I get to play the Lakers. You get to play the Warriors, whatever. And we control, I control all the Lakers. You control all the Warriors. We shift, you know, you pass the ball, you shoot the ball, whatever. Now it's about yourself. So now you create yourself in this mode called my player. Um, you scan your face and you go play as one of five people on a team. You get drafted by the Lakers and uh, now you're on the Lakers and, and <laughs> you're playing it. as yourself. You're not, yeah. you're not Kobe. Yeah. You're Ronnie Singh, right? And you have to adapt to a role. You, there can't be five Kobe Bryants on a team. There can't be five guys that are going to be ball dominant. You have to find a role and you have to play it. Um, the next iteration of that was trying to find that online. So now me, you, various other people can go in the world who have never met before potentially and go play a role on a team and try to just make it work again. You know, you, you have five different roles on a team. One of them is probably going to be a scorer, but then there's going to be a distributor, a rebounder, a, a rim yeah. protector, you know. Um, we realized that people wanted to play a game that wasn't about you know, five on five, it was about playing as themselves. Yeah. If you look at other games that are doing really well, it, it's they're all kind of taking that track, right? Like it's all about how am I living in this world? Grand Theft Auto is a great example of that, right? Like you you don't scan your face, but you play the role of this guy who walks in this open world and, and plays. Zelda, you don't scan your face, but you know, you're playing, it's more, it's more skewing towards RPG. And we realized that our fans wanted that and we had to build it over time. Um, and that's sort of how this kind of thing came together. Yeah. So looking back yeah. and seeing where it's ended up now, like, did you, did you ever think in your wildest dreams that it would be where, where it's at? Or were you like, you know what, if we put the pedal to the metal and the way things are going, were you able to predict this type of success? No, definitely not. I mean, you have to iterate and continue to expand. I don't think anybody at our company would have thought that we would have gone from, you know, a million units to I think it's over 12 now annually. I mean, mm -hmm. there's no other game in the the US that's doing that. Um, but the appetite, the fact that we retain so many fans year over year um, is is really remarkable because that's telling us that the consumer is coming back and challenging us to try to do better. You know, like every year when we put my third year there, 2K NBA 2K11 we put Michael Jordan on the cover uh -huh. and we had all these legends for the first time in the game. And I'm like, how are we going to do better than this? Uh -huh. Like, what are we going to do? Like we just put the goat on the cover and you know, every year we've continued to innovate. And now I, I almost look at it as basketball is still like, it feels like the youngest sport of the big three. Like it feels like the, there's still the most opportunity in basketball which means that we have so much opportunity as well. We're just scratching the surface. I feel like that, you know, our game has so many other ways to grow and become a, even a bigger community, a better community um, that I'm really excited for the future as well. Uh, so speaking of, so thinking of the future, where it's at now, I love how you're saying you have to keep innovating. Yeah. And to keep coming up with these, even when it looks like it's like shit. Yeah. How do I keep that? How do we keep pushing? And yeah. I know, like as a as a as a former football player, obviously, like every you know, I'd be all pro, first team all pro, and it's like, okay, what are you going to do now? Yeah. That's that's how I always thought uh, during the off season. It was always no. You okay. almost set a target on your yeah. back by by doing that, right? Do you like being in that position? Yeah, I mean, I think like being the favorite. You know, when I first started there, my social media. Um, it was funny. I got a, a lot of flack for this back in the day, for, even internally at Two K was. I would, I would be the guy that barked at the big dog, right? Uh -huh. Like I would kind of go after EA with some of my, my comments uh -huh. uh, once in a while. Um, and that was uncomfortable. But at the same time, it was, I felt like it was necessary because we needed to be heard. We needed uh -huh. to make a, ha you know, have a presence, make a presence. Now on, on the flip side, we're the favorite, we have the target on the back, but that's a, a different challenge, which is to your point, you have to innovate. You have to continue to like when you make that first all pro team, you're you're only expected to do more. And if you don't do if you don't elevate your game, you know, you're not going to make the all pro team. Even if you stay flat, you probably somebody some young kid is just going to get a little bit more attention because it's the element of surprise, you know, and I, I think that there's something something to that. LeBron James is remarkable to me because mm -hmm. 
he's continued to st- obviously last year was an aberration, but this year, you know, he's 30, what, 36 years old. And he has expanded his game to another level. And, you know, he's got all these young guys coming after him, but he's found a way to, to innovate, add another element to his mm-hmm. game. The greats do that. Yeah. They don't stay, they don't stay flat. They try to add another element to continue to separate and to continue to get the accolades that they deserve. Yeah, it's like uh, like Michael Jordan, yeah. you know, the turnaround fadeaway jumper instead yeah. of going to the hole and dunking yeah. it on people like he used to, averaging the same amount of points, probably even better. Yeah, uh, that's the good thing. When I was playing, I remember I used to tell people I, I loved getting older because the game it slows down even more and yeah. more the older I got. Uh, I wasn't maybe as quick or strong as I used to be. But you were playing smarter. But I could get play smarter, and yeah. I could get open so much more easier with less effort. Yeah. Um, uh, and it's that way in business too. It's that way. But I love how you um, how you said there's there's two sides to it. At the beginning, when you're just coming out, you have to have that audacity. Yeah. That you had. You have to have an attitude. What? Tell me about that. Tell me about that audacity. Spe- speak to that for the people out there who are just starting uh, their careers or whatever genre that they're trying to get into. Uh, making noise. Yeah. What, what does that mean to you to make I mean, noise? I, at the I beginning? just think in business, a lot of people feel comfortable at the beginning with what they know, mm-hmm. right? Like, they're the the real movers and shakers are going to come in and and really tell you their point of view and continue to drive it and continue to drive it. Maybe even to the point where they're annoying, mm-hmm. but at least they're pushing it. So that at one point you have to listen, and then if you're successful that one time, you're heard the next time. Mm-hmm. And I, you know, I think that that's kind of the thing you know you, you make a little nudge in your first appearance and you get attention for your second chance mm-hmm. right and I, I think that that is the same in business same in sports um you gotta you gotta be loud mm-hmm. you gotta not take no for an answer especially early in your career um and then later you know as you evolve in your career you gotta start thinking smarter Stop working so hard. What my honest, the honest truth is, when I first started at 2K, I was trying to do everything. I think everybody does that. Uh-huh. I think when you start a new corporation, you want to like try to fix all the problems. You want to try to do everything great. And I think working hard versus working smart is something that just evolves over time. You uh-huh. understand, like, here's where I'm going to put in the same amount of effort, but I'm going to have maximum return because, um, you know, I'm, I'm thinking about it with experience and with intelligence. Um, and that just takes time. That just takes experience and, and uh, you know, learning your craft o- yeah. over a, a course of time. Yeah, and I think a willingness too to, to, to get, like we talked about, just to get your ass kicked. Yeah. Nothing wrong with it. Like, to, or to get it wrong. Yeah, 100%. Make it nicer. Uh, I'm always a big believer that, that and, and a lot of this stuff is scary. Yeah. It's scary to call out the big dog. Oh, for it's sure. scary to say, hey, EA, we're coming for you. Yeah. But watch out. Uh, but I do think there's a fine line of there's what, what's your opinion on people that you're out there barking, yeah. but you don't have a bite, yeah. not yet. Yep. Um, so how did you, how did you, I mean, I couldn't have done it unless I believed in our product and yes. the people that I work with, right? Like our game is absolutely magnificent. Um, and the evolution, you know, I, I work with 400 of the best people in the business in terms of innovating and developing a, 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 vi- a sports video game, mm-hmm. especially on an annualized basis. There's a lot of games that come out, you know, the, the big title, Grand Theft Auto, I mentioned it, I love Grand Theft Auto, but it comes out every seven years. We have to come out every year. Yeah. And to think and not get tired and, and you, you know, like lazy in one year, that is probably the biggest challenge that we have. Mm-hmm. You know, we have to continue to challenge ourselves and be like, all right, here's how we can adapt and then get really excited again to do it the next year again. You know, mm-hmm. like, I think that's one of the, the most interesting things about working on an annualized title. There is no rest. There is no, a game, bare minimum, takes 14 months to develop, and we have 11. Uh-huh. You know what I mean? Yeah. Like, and so um, for us to be hungry and get ready for the next one, kind of parallel path, either the last game, the next game, even the, the games after, it's it's quite a challenge, but it's, it's been fun, and I'm so lucky that I get to work with people that kind of find the same joy in in that challenge. Uh huh. Well, speaking of working with some of these people, uh, I, I saw you in the All Star game this year. <laughs> uh, eight points, pretty good, man. That's pretty Dude, good. <laughs> no way. Okay, I gotta talk about this for a second. So I started three for three in four minutes, right? Yeah. I had six points in four minutes. I missed a four pointer, rattled in and out. So I almost had ten in four minutes. 
And then the entire second quarter, um, I got I, right before I went out at the end of the first quarter, Quinton Richardson like landed on my on my heel. So I was kind of like a little limpy. So Stephen A is like, dude, you're playing great. Stay out there. I'm like, just give me two minutes. I just need two minutes. He finally put me back in with like six and a half minutes to go, and I never touched the ball in the second quarter. Really? Not one time. <laughs> they don't want to ice you out, huh? No, I got iced out. You well, know. What's up no, with these teammates, actually, man? Actually, to be honest, we couldn't get the ball over half court. We only had one ball handler, so like <laughs> Qu- Quavo's line was three for 11. I'm sorry, three for 20 with 11 turnovers. <sighs> How do you go three for 20 with 11 turnovers? <laughs> I can tell you don't take it very seriously. Yeah, yeah, no, I mean, just look, an you got to be competitive. Game, right? <laughs> no, I, I'm walking to that game like it's supposed to be fun. You're supposed to play with celebrities. Yeah. And I'm like, uh, they're like getting a sweat up. Like, I'm like, look, anything I want to do, I'm going to try to do it to the best of my <laughs> ability. I'm not a basketball player. That was the first time that week I had picked up a basketball in six months uh, just because I've been traveling so much. I know so mean. I looked all right. You but know, you're, but you're, you're there to win. Uh, yeah, so tell me about I'm that, though. I mean, you're, you're a celebrity now. Yeah. And I know at the beginning you got into the business side. No, no one, chance. There's no way you would ever expect, yep. okay, I'm going to become a celebrity. Yep. And, and being recognized. And now you're playing in all-star games. You're, you're interacting with, with super, NBA superstars and celebrities, musicians, rappers, whatever it is, yep. actors. Uh, how has that been for you? I mean, first of all, like, to, uh, again, to your point about it being totally shocking, not expected, um, I, I don't know how to explain you know, how gracious I am for, to 2K and, um, you know, everybody that has been, had played a part in putting me in this position to, to do that. Um, working with our influencers, again, like as we grew in the cultural world, became such a key piece to this whole thing. Like, how do you market a game that's not traditional media? You work with influencers. And especially in the last couple of years, you know, we talked about the growth of gaming in the last couple of years, but influence the influencer world, I mean, I'm sure your kids watch like people that would never have been even remotely famous back yeah. in the day. And now like that's all they watch. Could you imagine that your kids watch somebody else play a video game instead yeah. of playing it themselves? I told you I'm from the old school. I, I like, still don't what understand a, this what whole a, thing. What yeah. a world, right? Yeah. What a yeah. world we live in. And, uh, but it's, it's, uh, it's been remarkable and, uh, you know, getting to work and innovate um, with guys that are the leaders of their industry, you know, like uh, a couple weeks ago, I was I was sitting in Travis Scott of all persons, just in his office, just sitting right here, probably about the same space, right? Uh-huh. And he's watching this video of the first guy that reached legend in 2K, um, and the, the prize he got with what, you get to jump out of a helicopter and uh, you know this funny stuff. And uh, Travis was just so like crazed about this thing uh-huh. and i'm i'm like so in admiration of what he's done in music and obviously the sneaker game and so like for us to kind of share that uh thought process on our respective industries and also be able to benefit each other is just like it's mind-boggling yeah. you know yeah. and but all of these guys want to get all of these influencers all these celebrities all these musicians they just like you want to understand gaming and this growth because it is it is the current wave, and it is definitely the next it, wave. Oh, it's coming, yeah. whether you like it or not. It's, yeah. it's coming, and I think it's great too. Honestly, you know, at first I ain't gonna lie, I was a little <laughs> like, "What the hell? No, you're not an athlete. They're paying you millions of dollars." Yeah. Like, what? I, it, 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 it's like went over my head. year olds making three million dollars in prize money. It's, which is Just nuts. Like that. Which I used to tell my kids when they were young, I'm like, "No, get off the video games. Let's go. Let's go <laughs> now throw like, the ball in now, the backyard." <laughs> like, now no. you're like, stay up, stay upstairs. They're like, Dad, you know that guy? Uh, he just won something. He won some guy. He won three point two million dollars, and yeah. you're like, "Holy shit! Are yeah. you serious? Yeah. Get back in there and play video games. Okay, <laughs> focus." Yeah. Uh, but with with that celebrityism. Um, and most people, when you're coming up, you know, I always talk about the haters yeah. or the people, the naysayers, the people that are going to tell you, you can't do something. Now you're under somewhat of a microscope. Yeah. I, I looked you up on YouTube and yeah. I, there was some guy's channel. I ain't going to mention it because, because trollers right. are trollers, but it was like devoted to just tearing you down. Yeah. Uh, how do you deal with the people? Uh, and what's your advice to people to that? Because you're always going to hear naysayers. You're, yeah. you're, there's going to be people out there to tell you you can't do it. But now being a celebrity too, now you're going to you're getting it from the world now. I think you have to kind of stay true to that that central focus, which is I've been t- being told no my whole life mm-hmm. from some source or another. So now it's it's a fan uh, of a video game of a product that you know I just get to represent, and I'm so gracious to be able to do that. Um, you know, I, I think 
I, I'd rather have it that way than the opposite way, which is like not being recognized for the amount of effort and thought and work that me and my team put into everything that we do. Um, you know, if you, if you're, if you're, if you want to be great, you're going to have some hate. And I didn't mean for that to rhyme. I did not prepare for that. A, uh, Travis Scott will tell you. Uh, that rhyme, exactly. Right? Travis <laughs> has had a, uh, a uh, reflection on me now. Um, but uh, but it's true. If you want to be is, great, you true. prepare for the hate. Yeah. You have to have thick skin and you, ha you have to realize that this is bigger than what's happening with you day to day. This is about really creating a platform to give back and, and do more than you know yourself. Uh-huh. Yeah. Yeah. Well, a lot of people out there... Uh, and I would echo that. Like, you cannot be afraid. Yeah. Uh, really, it all comes because down to Because the second that you are afraid, it's afraid. over. Yeah. You I know? love that. What would you say again? The second, that, the second that you're afraid, it's over. Yeah. It, l l like, you're, you're going to give in to, um, you know, the pressures about what you should be doing as opposed to what you have spent a lot of time thinking about and really working hard for. And, um, yeah, I mean, like I said, I've been, I feel like the people that, are in this position have been told no a lot of times. And the, the biggest difference is that they just did it anyway. Yeah. <laughs> so many times. Yeah. You know, over a, and over again. A lot, lot to be as said opposed about to giving, As opposed to giving into whatever pressure that you yeah. feel. And that's, but f at least for me personally, and yep. I've talked about it before, that shit is hard. It, at least it was for me, where I was so worried about what people thought. Yeah. And so I mean, but afraid how can you to not? let people down. I wanted everybody to be happy. And it's like, nah. Well, do you have that relationship with your parents too? Would I? I've had that with everybody when I was growing up. Yeah, I've definitely moved away. I have. Yeah. It's no, definitely. I've I've moved away from that, and yeah. everything's gotten better because of that. I think that that's one of the defining characteristics. You know, like I had again. I, we talked about my upbringing, f first generation, f oldest, had to set a tone. Still, I'm not married, which disappoints my parents. Mm -hmm. But um, you know, like you have to have that battle and kind of get hardened and, um, you know, not overcome, but like really dig into your position and, and just know that you're doing the right thing mm. and just have that internal, you know, belief and strength, the same internal belief and strength that when somebody is trolling on, on the internet, you're just, you're okay letting it go. Uh -huh. Yeah. So, <laughs> you see some of these celebrities that are like, I can't let yeah, it go. Some people can't. How and dare you? <laughs> everybody's got a different personality about it. And, you know, everybody wants to handle it their different way. I, ju I just choose to try to try my best to rise above it and know that they, they still love our product and, and mean well. Mm -hmm. Well, I mean, social media. Yeah. I mean, that's, that, that is, it, it's been so big over the last five years, like grown enormously, and it's only going to keep getting getting more impactful honestly yeah. it's like shaping what we do and there's a lot of good people. there's a lot of great things about it and there yeah. are some things that are not so great the and, good, we're, bad, we're, and talking about, we're talking about one of the the ugly things about yeah. it which is this anonymous hating yeah you know standing sitting behind your computer screen not putting a face to what you're saying and that being okay i you know i i don't really subscribe to that being okay but um you know i Obviously, I'm a huge proponent of social media because that was really how I had had my come up, you yeah. know. And so I appreciate the people that are using it very well. It's a lot of work. It's not easy, you know. Like I, I think t growing a Twitter following is one of the hardest things you can do. And somehow I have 1.2 million Twitter following uh, tw Twitter followers, and a lot of that came from hard work. And what I mean by hard work is I watched every basketball game. I had a commentary on it. People dug my commentary on it. My following grew, uh -huh. but I had to do that every single night, every single game that I could, um, and have a point of view, have a different message than you know anybody else. Uh -huh. And when you when you're different, you know you can you might get hated on a, a little uh -huh. bit, especially in the sports world, right? Like yeah. that's what everybody wants co competition. So there's always conflict about you know, your point of view on something. So uh, I love that. I love that. Cause it's, you're grinding it out. You're gathering information yeah. and you're putting out your opinion, but you say it's yours it's, though. It's, that's yours. And you're saying it's different, yeah. but I believe too, like the more information that you can gather, the more different opinions and the more like the, like the puzzle comes together for Which you. Which is one of the best things about social media. Yeah. Right. Yeah. Like yeah. Every, every, it's, it's that it's like, if you were sitting in a bar with a million people and everybody could just weigh in 
at the same time. That's mm-hmm. what social media is. Yeah, Which but I, th- I think the voice that gets heard is the one who's maybe either some people are out there and they're just saying outlandish things yeah. just to be outlandish. Yeah. Like, I'm just going to be different. Yeah. But if you haven't educated and you've grinded, like you said, and you've gathered all this information, you studied all, you watched all the games. Yeah. Now, when you give an opinion, it's authentic. Yeah. And I'm a big believer that authenticity, that's the reason you're sitting here. Yeah. Because there's going to be people that watch you and yeah. they go like, wait, why the hell him? Yeah. Okay. But there is a reason it's because you're authentic and you've put the time in to gather information. And that's why you can give informed opinions. And yep. a lot of people forget that. They think it's just about yelling just and screaming. Yep. And that's what the trollers are. Those yep. are the people out there. And they might get a couple followers, people that that buy into what they're doing. But for the most part, uh, most people are looking at them going, eh, it's just noise. Yep. Or maybe you might get a big gathering, but no one's really taking you too seriously. They just want to hear the noise. Yeah. Uh, so I'm a big believer in, in what you're saying there. Uh, <laughs> Real, real quick, because uh, I know this is this affected me a Please. little bit with the Madden football um, ratings. Yes, you're around all these guys now, and you know you have the, the the ratings as players. I know there's guys coming up to you and going, "What the hell?" <laughs> like what, my rating what? on Madden, Madden. Sometimes my son tells me, "He's all yeah, such and such has a higher speed rating than you." I'm like, "What? I'm way faster than that guy. Yeah. I have way better hands than that. Why yeah. would they give me that?" I know. Score? Isn't it? It's funny. Like it's become this thing where it's relative to the other guy. I mean that's the old, that's always what I hear. You're like, I always hear such and such. How is he better than me at rebounding or or whatever? I put up this was my average. This was his average. I'm like, why are you sitting here knowing his average? <laughs> like, why do you know that? Because we're athletes. It's important. You to gotta us. know. I mean, like you know what's crazy about the whole ratings thing in general is just like making. I, I you're gonna think I'm ridiculous by saying this, but. Just like making a all-star team, just like making all NBA or all NFL Pro Bowl um, ratings is right there. It's crazy. Like mm. it's it's another with a in a competitive world, a number associated with your name is perfect because in you know like you're gonna have a point of view of that, and it's gonna everybody else is gonna have a point of view of it. But if you have a better rating than somebody else, you're winning. Yeah. It's just an, it's just like making the all the all star team. I made the all star team. Devin Booker didn't make the all star team. Yeah, I have a ninety eight. Devin Booker has a ninety seven. Yeah. I'm better than De- Devin Booker. I'm sorry, I don't mean to pick on Devin, but but uh, you know that it's it's in that same ca- kind of caliber. Who would have thought that some silly video game number about your rating would mean so much to so many? And the craziest thing is, it's dynamic. So. You want a better rating? Go play better. It's uh-huh. li- that's what I always say to the NBA guys, which not all of them love that, but it, it's the truth. Yeah. It's within their control. Yeah, yeah, well, I always say uh, <laughs> comparison is the thief of joy. But that's sometimes, right. <laughs> oh, it's too, it's hard. It's yeah. tempting. <laughs> um, let's talk about your, your you, you mentioned a little bit about, you know, it's about giving back. And you're very charitable. Mm-hmm. Uh, you've done anti-bullying campaigns, make a wish, uh, uh, you've been involved with them too. Yeah. Why has that been so important for you to to be a part of, of uh, giving back? I mean, the number one thing is if you're going to build a platform and you're not going to do anything that's going to better just the the world that we live in, then what is the point? Mm. Like, you know, we work on this wonderful basketball game that is really, you know, changing people's lives. Both na- it used to be just their enter- their joy in entertainment, but now it's also financially with the two K league and you know, being able to make a career out, out of playing or on YouTube. Um, why are we creating those platforms? We it's, it's to give back. It's to think of bettering, you know, the human world. Um, we actually have a wish that we're announcing this Wednesday. Um, not announcing where uh, I did a, a wish a kid wished to meet me and, and come to 2k um, back in December and we're revealing it um, on Wednesday this upcoming Wednesday. Uh, but the, the biggest thing is, can we give this kid a platform to tell his story? Um, so we're actually, there's these logos in the neighborhood. I know you're looking at me like, what are you talking about? Mm-hmm. But it's this, it's associates like, I have a 2K logo because I work at 2K. Yeah. An NBA player has an NBA logo because they're in the NBA, it's yada, yada, yada. We're giving him a Make-A-Wish logo uh-huh. so people know his story and want to explore and look into that. Um, so on Wednesday, that's, that's the first time that we're going to have a Make-A-Wish logo in the game um, cool. that will be assigned to any Make-A-Wish kid. Obviously, he'd be the leader of it. And his face got scanned. We put his shot in the game. Um, 
you know, we really blew it out of the water with him, but we're here to better this place. So if you're going to have a platform, use that platform. Oh, I love it. Yeah. I love it. I and mean, you know, a lot of, a lot of players, NBA, they do NFL, a great show. whatever it is, they, it's such a, yeah. it's such a feel good because they do, they recognize that, Hey, it's, this is part of it. Yeah. It's important to give back. 100%. So I'm, I'm really happy that you guys are doing that. Um, what is the, what does the future hold for, for, for you? Oh, for me, for you, uh, for me, I mean, I just talked about the platform. Uh, you know, I'm thinking a lot about, uh, what the platform, uh, means in general. Like, is there a world where we can educate gamers to, um, grow them even more? That's something I think about a lot. Like how do, how do we, how do we build a next world of gamers? The next, you know, like, um, 2k star I, i'm always thinking about that so i think you know one of the big things i want to do next is figure out a way to highlight some of these guys and in, in an even bigger way and i don't know exactly what that looks like but um you know if if colleges are identifying that kids need gaming scholarships and companies are paying gamers to you know win competitions I, there's something there and um so i think about that a lot uh i'm really overjoyed to be at 2k and uh, i still think that the the uh i was talking about bat basketball is still in its like infancy i still think which means our game is still in its infancy there's still a lot to be done i i uh i believe fully that you know we still have so much more uh to do to give back to to basketball uh -huh. as a game, yeah. so yeah. Do you, uh, do you do you write down goals? Do you do you do you say specifically? Okay, this is where I want to be a you year know, from now, two uh, years from now. I say I I like manifest them. Like I definitely talk about it with my close people, but I I, I guess I don't write them down. That'd probably be a good exercise. But, but you talk about it though. You I speak it out loud. I definitely okay, I definitely is... I definitely believe in manifestation. Uh -huh. You know, like. It was so funny uh, going back to the make a wish thing. Uh, the first wish I ever did um, was in 2014. Some kid, his name was uh, his name was Trayvon. He was from Ohio, and uh, about six months before that, uh, did you did you hear the Bat Kid? It was this kid that wished to be Batman, and so Make a Wish turned San Francisco into Gotham. Yeah, it was really really yeah. cool. Yeah, yeah, I heard of that. Um, I remember that and. I just remember right before that happened, I was like, God, I wish, you know, I could like figure out a way to, to do give back. Like I, my career was starting to, my social media presence was starting to grow. And I was like, I really want to figure out a way to like highlight and, and do charitable stuff. And the back end thing happened. And then I spent the next six months like trying to figure out how do I get to make a wish? I like, m maybe I didn't like send the right emails or, or whatever, but like I, I was just having a hard time getting to the right person. And then, I was like, I just want to work with Make-A-Wish. I want to work with Make-A-Wish. And then Make-A-Wish reached out to us and said there was a kid that wanted to meet me and come to 2K. Uh, yeah. Back in 2014, right? A lot of examples of manifestation, but the, uh, that one I just remember because I wanted that for six months and then a letter just appeared on, in my email. Yeah. And I'm like, this is what I've actually been... Of all the, of all the charitable programs to be involved in, the one that I wanted to work with was the one that I had been talking about. Uh -huh. And we got that opportunity. And now, you know, I believe I've been participated in over 40 wishes now, which is beyond, you know, my wildest dreams. Um, I really believe in manifestation. If you say that you want to do something, it's, it might not happen tomorrow, but it, it will happen. Uh -huh. Put it out there. I love it. I love it. In this world of, excessive screen time especially in your world yeah um how do you quiet your mind i don't think i do a good job you don't, that. do you meditate you know what's or funny? like that i know that the purpose of um uh the wide open podcast is to think about what we're wide open to mm -hmm. i don't one of the biggest things i feel like i'm wide open to is figuring out a way to slow it all down like uh -huh. i need to figure out how to do that because i am constant i travel 50 Weekends a year out of fifty-two, it's a little bit crazier than the football schedule. Like, yeah. but I, I I do enjoy it, but it doesn't leave me a lot of time to just be like, even process and even have moments of 
gratitude. I mean, I am gracious, but like uh, to just reflect and think, you know, slow down and be like, okay, how can I pivot? How can I do this? So um, that's why, you know, I'm very lucky with the people I have around me because they try to push me to do that. But I, I really need to do a little bit of that myself. Uh -huh. But, I, you know, I saw this, uh, I don't know if you saw this the other day, but there's this pie graph going around of like, how did I think I was going to make it? And it's the, it used to be the whole pie was work hard. Now it's work hard is like a sliver, but there's sleep, there's eat well, there's exercise and all of those things for 10 years up until probably three years ago, I was awful at. Yeah. I just worked. Uh -huh. I just worked 24 seven. Right. Yeah. And now I've made it a, a focus to, uh, I have a I have a personal trainer. Um, I have, I try to sleep eight hours a night sometimes. Uh -huh. <laughs> um, and, uh, you know, I try to just kind of rest. I need to do a little bit better job. How long of, have you been of trying this? Being this awake. Way? How long has it, how long have you been doing it? To the, that like regimen? All this stuff, like getting the good uh, sleep now, like to the trainer, the eating three years. better. Three years now you've been doing yeah. it? And how did, what's oh, been, it's the been the results? Oh, it's been a world of difference. Dude, you should see a picture of me like five years ago. It's well, pretty funny. Pretty, uh, yeah, a little I, bulky, I little bulky? Skinny fat. <laughs> <laughs> but now, you know, you got to take care of yourself. Yeah. Otherwise, you, you're going to be here for a good time, not a long time, you know? Yeah. So I, uh, I, I really started to focus on that. And that, that pie graph the other day I saw, I was like, this is absolutely right. It's not about just working hard. It's also about finding some balance, but also like taking care of yourself because uh -huh. we take that for granted. Uh, for you know? sure. For yeah. sure. I get it. And you know, that, that work hard part of it too. I've been talking about it with Snoop. I was talking with Mike Tyson, yeah. uh, the whole there's, if you want to work hard, you better find something that you love and you're passionate yeah. about. And I can tell just sitting here talking to you that you're very passionate about what you do. Well, you Otherwise, know, I, you won't work hard. You yeah. won't get out of bed early. You, you won't make those sacrifices. If there's, there's no such thing as hard work if you don't love it. No, in a way, in a way I've said I haven't worked in 12 years. Yeah. You, you know what I mean? I like, agree. Yeah. In a way. Obviously, I'm on the road all the time and I'm grinding. I'm always thinking about my job. But in a way, I've, I haven't worked. Yeah, you know, and that's and where you want to be. The yeah. only challenge about that though is time is flying. All of a sudden, here we yeah. are. Like it's crazy, you know. Yeah. Like I've been at two K twelve years. Next week, that's wild. Yeah, long, um, long days, short years. Yeah, it just it's, 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 it's flying by, like but it's it's been great and you know a thrill of a lifetime. So, uh, any any mantras that you've adopted, or since maybe maybe a couple that you grew up with, anything that you live by. I mean, I, I think for a long time I was quite a perfectionist and I needed everything to, to go right. But in the long run, like life is, is ups and downs, you know, and you got to be prepared. If, if you're such a perfectionist, I had to learn this when I was in my 20s. If you're such a perfectionist, you're going to be so disappointed and almost paralyzed, you know, when something goes wrong. And inevitably things go wrong. Like, you know, it's life's a, life's a bumpy bumpy road. So I think you got to always look, I mean, I, I hope this isn't too cliche, but I, I believe it, which is you got to look at the big picture and, and you know, not, not everything is the end of the world. And that was hard for me when I was in my twenties. Cause I was so motivated, so ambitious, so driven. Um, and, uh, so I had a hard time with that, but I feel like I, you know, if you look at it over the course of 12 years, you know, generally you, you have to feel good about the package. That's it, right? Like uh -huh. you can't, not, not everything's going to be perfect, but generally if you look back and you think of, about a, a period of time and you feel generally happy about it, then I think you're doing just fine. Mm -hmm. What's, what's been the, the biggest wall that you've ran into? Biggest wall. Your career. Um, and how, did, think, you, and how did you bounce back from that? Uh, I think that the biggest wall is, the understanding of how this has happened. I, I, I mean, social media wasn't a thing. Like I said, it wasn't a thing when I started. Inf this influencer thing wasn't a thing when I started. I don't develop the game, right? So like for a long time, you know, I do wonder if some people were like, hey, this guy doesn't make the game, but he, he gets a lot of credit for the way that this game comes out. And like the misconception about what I, I do and the misunderstanding of uh, 
you know, becoming the face of this game without developing the game and, you know, doing social media um, without anybody understanding social media 10 years ago, that was, that's tough to overcome because you're continuing to have to educate and, you know, really drive the value of, you know, what you're doing. The value now is pretty obvious um, because of the time I spend uh, talking about our brand and being on a platform and getting to work with great guys like you and, you know, the, the people across the entertainment business. Um, but for a long time that, you know, I had to keep kicking that door down and, yeah. and trying to drive home that this is, this is, this was very, very important, um, for the business and separating it. Ultimately, you know, I, th I think our consumer, you know, going back to listening to our consumer, our consumers used to identities, you know, like, our consumer understands Steph Curry's upbringing and his story, you know, they, they love basketball, but they also have come to understand and appreciate the, you know, the, that come up as a person. And I, you know, like I think a lot of things that have, have happened in my career at 2k, some of it, some of it really needed an identity. I remember game of zones. I don't know if you're familiar with that. It's like a bleacher report cartoon on the NBA uh, that comes out every couple weeks really really funny they did a uh a thing about 2k and it was something about ratings and i think if you don't have a person associated with that it doesn't hit you as hard so like a persona people just like connecting with people more than they like connecting with brands it's just more authentic it's not shilly you know i started at 2k two years after being in the top 10 of the 2K boards, I would go home. I was one of our, I, would, I was just, I happened to be one of our biggest fans that just was lucky enough to start working for our company. Mm -hmm. And that's a story that I think is aspirational and that our consumer can connect with, um, which is why it's important for me to continue to tell that story over, you yeah. know, over the years. Well, just over the course of this last almost an hour now, talking yeah. to you about it though, it's, it's more than just saying, okay, well, I was just a big fan of the game and I was really into it. Like, yeah. there's a lot of stuff that, uh, you know, the heart I appreciate that. and the mindset that you've poured into to becoming the person you've become. Uh, and that's what this, the, the, you know, the purpose of this podcast is so people can see yeah, that. And I've that. clearly seen that. As far as what you're pursuing in the future, are you a, and it doesn't sound like this because you've kind of already answered it, but you're yep. not, you, it, there's, no, there's no fear there of going after what you think no. could be something that would help. No. Right? Uh, any way no that fear. I can help whatever project I'm working on or the business or 2K, you know, I will always be indebted to the company and uh, forever. Um, I, whatever I can do to enhance the business, mm -hmm. I'm more than willing to do. Um, uh -huh. You know, all those hours, the blood, sweat, and tears, it's, it's, a, it's not a, you know, temperamental thing. It's, it's, we do that all the time. I talked about, you know, the 400 people I work with, the, the, the developers and getting the juices going to get the next year's game and innovate and think about the next title. That takes passion and that takes like a lot of just desire to, it's hard to do the same thing year over year and try to get up for work every day. But mm -hmm. me and those people, we do it and we do it in a really great way. And our game has continued to iterate a pace that's just not like anything else in the industry. Yeah. And that comes from the core of our passion. Crushing it, crushing it. Good stuff. All right, final questions. Yes. Um, which current player, NBA, is the best at, M at 2K? Paul George. Paul I say George. it all the time. You said that quick. You know, I'm sure you've that, answered that question before. But I, I, <laughs> I get asked that question a lot, but it was funny. We did this. Uh, uh, he opened a court at Palmdale. I, me and him through the 2K Foundations. We're doing these court openings across the country. It's really cool. And uh, we did one in Palmdale, which is where he's from, uh, a few months ago. And then he did a gaming tournament. And he lost the championship to Patrick Beverly, his teammate. Uh -huh. He was, he was so sure upset. It. it was so funny. <laughs> but uh, he's he's the best I've ever seen. Guys, you get, it gets so competitive. Yeah. I remember back in college, uh, we would we would play till three in the morning, and we would be. Uh, it it's would ruin my time, night, man. my day <laughs> if I lost to like you know one of my guys on the team. Yeah, the worst. Can um, I ask you a question? Actually, sure. on that, do you think like so? We have five hundred and eighty. 
players in the NFL that are verified in our game, which means like they have a football logo. Uh-huh. That's like half the league. It's yeah. pretty wild. Do you think there's something to, I'm sorry, I'm, I'm interviewing you. No, now. Sure. <laughs> um, do you think there's something to like taking a break from what you're, like your normal sport and playing the other game. Like I just, I find it so fascinating that we probably have a higher percentage of NFL players playing our game than even NBA really? players. <laughs> I, I just think people want that mental break and they uh-huh. want to play as themselves. And I know most NFL players aspire to be a basketball player anyway, yeah. but, but uh, what are your thoughts there? I, well, I think the reason it is so popular with football, a lot of us, we all played basketball. Yeah. That's the reason we're in the NFL, by the way, for the, you kids out there listening <laughs> It's about cross training. Yeah. And I think basketball, I would have never, ever been as good a football player if I didn't play uh, basketball. For sure. And so that's still in my heart. Uh, and basketball. I remember you were one of the first, guy, yeah. if not the first guy to dunk, uh, dunk the ball in the field goal post every yeah. single week. Well, I, wasn't, I, I was the one who brought it back. You uh, brought there, it back. Some, uh, I think Al Toon. I don't know if you know that name. No. <laughs> he played for, back in the 70s, got late him. 70s, he dunked it over one time yeah. and never did it again. For me, when I got there and back in 97, I was like, you know what? I, gotta, I mean, I, I remember it. Different. I still remember yeah. it. Yeah, that was my thing. That was yeah. my little <laughs> chi-ching sign. Uh, but yeah, I think NFL players, they, they, they love the game. That's all we talk about. We talk about basketball a lot and we're big fans. Just like you said, it's kind of an urban thing. This is amazing how much, how many play 2K. And I just feel like, and a lot of them tell me that we don't play Madden. They don't? They don't play Madden? No, uh, I think that like, if you do your craft every single day, I'll I'll be honest, I play 2K a lot less than I used to before I started 2K. Because you're around it all the time. I'm traveling. But you're always thinking about it and you to your point about you know needing a mental break, you yeah, got skill little break. You got to yeah. do it. Uh, on a desert island, you had three things to bring. What would you bring? Wow, um, this this question's been stomping people. I might get rid of this. I don't know. Leave a comment. Let me know if you like. Can this I bring question. my cell phone? But, but, <laughs> then I'm gonna just end up working. Uh, I had like the worst vacationer ever. I haven't gone on a vacation in probably five years. Um, and when I did, I I sat on the beach for a day and then. The next day, <laughs> I was like, all right, back Bored. on my phone. Like, I'm texting people, like, let's get back to work. Um, yeah. That's hard for me. Uh, I mean, it'd be, it'd be probably three pieces of technology. Well, no, I, I like my dog there. How about that? Okay. My dog and uh, two pieces of technology. My cell phone and Netflix. And Netflix. <laughs> so you can, I'll be you know what? I'll be stay home. Just stay home, <laughs> yeah, Ronnie. Stay home. <laughs> get off the beach. <laughs> yeah. uh, um, last meal. What would you serve? And you can invite, usually I say you can invite anybody in history, but I want you to, what three NBA players would you invite, living or dead, to wow. the last meal? What would you serve and what three players would you invite? Can I serve something that I don't make? My mom's- Yeah, my, yeah, something you don't make, my, something, my, anything. My, my mom's killers. spaghetti. Your mom's spaghetti? A killer. Okay. Unbelievable. Um, and I would invite three, okay, Carl Anthony Towns, because- the guy does not shut up, and he just—he's always joking around. Got to have, got to have a jokester at the table. Um, I mean that in the most affectionate way possible. Um, who else? Who else would I have to have there? Throughout history, it doesn't matter who it is. Well, I gotta have Michael Jordan just so we could just sit there worshiping him the whole uh-huh. time. And another basketball player. I mean, I'm sort of emotional about Kobe right now, so I guess I'd have to have Kobe, Kobe there. Yeah. 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 Maybe hear those guys talk. Just have Kobe and Mike just bash each other the whole time. Just talk trash on each other. I was the best. I was the best. That was amazing. (laughs) What Mike had to say about Kobe a few days ago. Oh my God. Yeah. Amazing. Oh, they talk about competitors, right? Yeah. Yeah. Jeez. Legendary. Yeah. Legendary. That's a whole different subject, too. Like, no, we could probably have another hour long podcast on that. The competitiveness of those guys uh, is. I don't know. It's a little, maybe even a little too much. I'm well, thinking, I'm like, God, well, have let some me ask fun you a question here. about that. Actually, <laughs> like, I I don't think that they were loved outside of you know people on their team in in the league while they were playing. Like, I think Kobe, well, he reveled in being. I mean, he even had a Nike campaign where he was you know dark, mm-hmm. you know, and he was the villain. Um, but then as soon as he got out of the out of the league, he was beloved. Yeah. And that transition, I, I just think that if you're ultra competitive, you're not going to really be known until you're done doing your thing because you're so ultra focused on it. It's hard. It's hard. You know? I, I was kind of the same way. I, was, I wasn't a popular teammate. Yeah. No way. Yeah. Uh, because you expect so much and some, yeah. people, some people can't get to that level either. I mean, there's so few people, those two are obviously among them, you were among them, that have 
an amazing amount of athletic prowess, but then they also match it with just this unbridled determination. Um, and you know, those two guys are the pinnacle of the, of the NBA. There's so many guys that have come in the NBA and they just don't have that same determination. You're just like, man, if you had that, yeah, you would have won 15 championships yeah. in a row. Cause I mean, it, it, as rare as their body types were yeah. or are, yeah. uh, there's other guys out there like yeah. that, that, that are six, six and have long arms and quick as a cat and can jump 40 inches. Uh, it does happen. You know what's going to be but fascinating? But those guys were not going to be there because they don't have what it what's takes. What's going to be fascinating play. is Zion. I mean, the guy yeah. is so gifted. Uh, like, yeah. he's a freight train. He's a freight train on the court. Yeah. And I met him a few times. Great kid. Um, and I, I believe he has it in him, but we're going to have to see. We will see. The, I don't know if anybody has it in them like Jordan and Kobe, though, in yeah. terms of that. That's what I'm saying. That, that competitor, sometimes yeah. it's, a, it's, it's, it's borderline. Yeah. I don't ever want to call it a sickness, but it is borderline like wow yeah I, did you did you not have fun too to at least a little bit or yeah or whatever i mean no they almost found fun in that obsession which is the weirdest thing uh, well who's to say uh, that's all i'm gonna say you could probably who, who, say that who, about you know me and my career so you could probably say that about a lot of people yeah well that's why we have this podcast i'm <laughs> so right. interested that's in this right. shit like to understand okay what, what's what makes people tick uh, and and how do they get to that point? Yeah. How do you work yourself in, up into that frenzy? For a lot sure. of times too, you see people have a story. Um, like with with Tyson, uh, like it's usually something bad happened as a child, something where they felt like they're and they're so sensitive. Uh, I know that was what, what I went through, where it was like shit. I don't ever yeah. want to feel like that again. Yeah. And I'll I don't I, I won't even let myself even approach being bullied or being made fun of or not being looked at as, as one of the best. I have to be looked at like that when I was playing football. It was like, I, could, I don't care. I don't yeah. care how hurt I am. I'll go out in that and field your and team, get it. And your teammate's opinion of you is, yeah. does, doesn't matter. At that matter. point, I could give a shit yeah. what you think about me because yeah. I'm going to go out there and be the best. You, you had tunnel vision on, on mm -hmm. your goal. Yeah. Totally, I totally get that. Um, how do you want to be remembered? What's your, uh, what's your, what's your legacy? Um, I mean, so far, this probably this, this probably won't be a surprise um, based on what we've talked about. But I mean, I I don't want to be morbid, but like my tombstone, if it was to say one thing, I I'd wanted to say that he lived with passion. Yeah, that's it. Yeah, simple as that. I think that's great. Uh, uh, you know, whatever you want to do, like whatever your goals are, uh, full come in full circle, right? I talked about, I just had this huge thirst in sports. Whatever thirst that anybody has, if you have tremendous passion about it, if you can carve out a niche, you can make a lot of money doing whatever. Mm -hmm. You know, it's not out of the realm of possibility. I think that we live in a world in 2020 that like there are influencers in the most random things, but you got to give them props because they identified something that they were really into invested a, a lot into themselves to make it happen. I was talking about watching a lot of basketball games and having conversations and growing my Twitter following that way. Same sort of concept, right? Um, any, it's, it's all, it's all right there. Mm -hmm. It's all right there. Yeah. Love it. All right. So final, final question. You kind of already <laughs> answered this, but Five it's the way questions. we end the show here. It's the same question <laughs> no, I ask every please. guest that comes on here. What's uh, one area of your life that you'd like to improve in that you're wide yeah, open I think, to learning more? About? I think a lot of it is, is trying to improve in balance. You know, mm -hmm. like I think I've gotten better the past few years, but there's things I need to do. You know, I, I see your beautiful family, that picture uh, out there. Mm -hmm. um, one day I want to, you know, have a family as well. Um, and I try to be the best dad that I can be and best family member I can be like that. That will be my next kind of iteration. Um, you know, finding that, finding that focus, being able to pivot off of what you were good at for so long um, and trying to put that same sort of level of excellence in, into the next thing. That's important, but it comes with balance and like, you know, um, I, I could definitely work on that. Yeah. I could definitely work on that. Well, something tells me if you put your mind to it, sitting here with you this last hour, uh, you're going to find it. I appreciate, I appreciate it, so. that, man. I appreciate it. Good luck with it, man. And I appreciate you coming on. Of course. All Thank right. you for having me. Thanks. Yeah. Yeah. So nice to meet you, bro. Thanks, man. Good to meet you. Appreciate, appreciate you doing that.